You already know what it is, YouTube, and if you didn't know, you better find out, because this is your boy, Division, and we back again with another UFC MMA reaction, y'all. I'm loving the journey, still having so much fun with these videos, and we got another good one for you today, y'all. We got 10 jaw-dropping fights that alter the course of history. I don't know what to expect from this one. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some bangers, though. That's all I know. Um, it's going to be some dope fights, and I'm not going to waste no more time. Let's go get right into the video, y'all. Let's get it. In just over 30 years, MMA has gone from no holds barred sideshow to a dominating presence within the sporting world. Yep. What is called the ultimate I remember back when I was like a kid, I used to hear about it, but people didn't take it seriously. Boxing and like kickboxing and stuff like that was like the real tough guy sports. But now, UFC is up there. Like, you might be able to get that up there, like, right up there with the four major sports here in this country. Shit, I might put it above hockey, actually, in my like popularity. Boyce Gracie versus Art Jimerson, UFC 1. Get more friction on an arm, though? Yes, good. And, it's and what better place to begin than with a fight that started it all? But uh, watch for so I think you're going to see the uh, clinch is extremely important in jiu-jitsu. He got, like, one boxing glove on and one bare knuckle. Unathletic looking Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter thoroughly dominating a world-class boxer probably hmm. seems far-fetched. And to acknowledge the accomplishment of a pioneer warrior who 65... But the Gracie family had a hand in setting up the UFC in the first place, almost as an advertisement for what their fighting system could do. And instead of going for one of the more intimidating members of their clan to represent them, their entry into UFC 1 was the unassuming hoist. That, which is a very humane way, in fact, to defeat your opponent without having to just beat the guy up. Tasked with taking on the elite pro boxer Art Jimerson in round one of the one night tournament, Gracie made short work of the one glove Jimerson, proving that BJJ was capable of making a lifelong fighter look like a fish out of water as soon as the takedown was achieved. He's on top. This is not a good place a headbutt to for Art to work a little bit of headbutt. MMA as we know it would not have been the same had Art connected with an early punch and sat Gracie down. He just tapped out. He just tapped out. Ken wow. Okay. They don't shot me though. Honestly, he took the boxer down. He don't know how to defend takedowns. We jump forward to UFC 5 and the very first super fight to ever take place within the organization. Ken Shamrock though, uh, I used to know about him as a kid because he was in the WWF. Uh, yeah, that, that's crazy. Like his whole character there was like he was legit. Like he was a legit fighter. And then um, later on in life, I found out yeah, he really is a legit fighter. I ain't really seen him fight before though, so this is gonna be cool to watch. Boyce had managed to repeat his UFC one success by also winning the UFC two and four tournaments. Shamrock, on the other hand, had shown himself to be a truly elite and well-rounded mixed martial artist on the pancreas scene, and his sole loss in the UFC came against Boyce at UFC 1. Mm. When these two collided for a second time, the fight was far closer and way longer. In fact, to this day, this 36-minute long stalemate is the longest matchup in UFC history, and one of the reasons why time limits were eventually brought in. So this ended in a stalemate. That's a long fight then. I wonder how long the fight actually went on. Chuck Liddell is another legend I've heard of. The friendship is over! This was a collision of two early 2000 superstars that almost seemed like it was never going to happen. Before Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz were legendary rivals, they were once friends and training partners, holding a mutual connection in their relationship with Dana White. But once things soured between Tito and the other two, this light heavyweight collision was eventually set up. And despite the UFC still operating outside of the mainstream, this Ooh, fight had quite a lot nice of head, kid. appeal. Didn't really not do nothing to him. On fight night, we also got to see exactly why Chuck Liddell was such a major figure and how his fighting style made every one of his prime matchups must watch television. Okay. 
Connected. Connected. Big blows. Krokop. That's the dude in from the last video, uh, that tough guy video, like the guys you don't want to run into. Fight of the century. Our first non UFC matchup took place under the Pride banner during the peak of their activity in the mid 2000s. Yep, he definitely wants to luck up. See? Fedor Emelianenko had very clearly made his claim at being not only the best heavyweight on the planet, but also MMA's single greatest fighter. But the rise of Mirko Krokop was proving himself to be a devastating force within the Pride organization. We told you the left high kick has sent many opponents to the MMA Mozilla. And when he finally called out the last emperor, a matchup was made that marked a truly special cultural moment for the sport. Plus, the bout itself was an enthralling pairing of world-class striker versus jack of all trades Sambo Master. Crashing down as well. Yep. I think so too. And though Fedor won in the end, both men left this bout as superstars and bona fide icons of mixed martial arts. Shit, they was fucked up. He remains the most dominant champion in mixed martial arts and undefeated at that, improving to 11 and 0. Forrest Griffin versus Stephen Bonner, tough season one finale. The UFC really needed to catch a break in the mid 2000s. Since being taken over by the Fertitta brothers and Dana White led Zuffa, their experimental TV show The Ultimate Fighter hadn't quite managed to set the world on fire. But when the finale came around and the light heavyweight finalists Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner stepped into the cage, the executives at Spike TV were so impressed that they literally greenlit a second season of the show there and then. And while Griffin won a narrow decision victory, Dana stepped into the cage and gave both men UFC contracts for their efforts. Some call it the fight that saved the UFC, but either way, it was one hell of a contest. George so that was just a big uh, exposure UFC fight right there. And, and the fight looked good too, but it looked like it was more because it just gave exposure to the sport that the general public didn't know about. BJ Penn was the first time two reigning UFC champions would throw down inside the cage. An actual super fight in the traditional sense of the term. St. Pierre tries to come over the top. GSP was able to grow into this bout and put on an increasingly dominant performance to eventually force the corner stoppage at the end of round four. St. Pierre in full control! But this fight was even more significant for opening the doors to this kind of matchup as a regular thing moving forward. Still the undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, George! Rush St. Sure, it took a few years for the UFC to make another champ versus champ bout, but the more frequent super fights of the modern day owe a lot to the UFC 94 headliner. Shogun Rua versus John Jones, UFC 128. Okay. To become the youngest UFC champion of all time. John Jones. The level of raw talent that comes around once in a generation. Here we go! Didn't he John and fuck him up? John Jones went on to become perhaps the greatest so. fighter to ever lace up four ounce gloves and fight. Because let's be real, no 23 year old should be able to maul a legend like Shogun Rua like that. For the last six weeks, knew that he was probably going to get taken down. Him the he is. Just show up one of the single greatest MMA performances of all time. But it gave us an insight into exactly where the sport was headed. Jones stood out amongst his peers like someone with an iPhone would stand out in the 1990s. He was just on a different level, and all the faith that his fans had in his abilities would translate into the single most impressive career we had ever Damn. seen. Damn. And on this fade night in 2011, he knew to sleep. Jones. Jones to the body. And it is all over. John Jones. Ronda Rousey versus Liz. Okay, he's got the. UFC okay, a big win. It's the ladies. The Ronda Rousey. Put the ladies on. Ronda Rousey did put the women's fighters on the map, though. Like, I didn't even, like, even think about women's fighters before Ronda Rousey. Carmouche has it over under. Carmouche has the back. Women's MMA had never been featured in the UFC octagon before, but Ronda's electric victory over Liz Carmouche would take the women's side of the sport from the regional scene to the very pinnacle of the game. Again, Mike. 
the sport's biggest star of all time had officially landed. Her level of mainstream crossover appeal certainly helped to bring the UFC and MMA as a whole to a different audience entirely. The women's Batamite champion Sure, her decline was ugly. Cranked off that right hand, boom, boom. But Pete Rousey was an absolutely unmissable attraction. Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor, UFC 194. Okay. Yeah, I've seen some of this in the McGregor video. How could we make a video like this and He's not slip him, bro? What? Like that truly took Conor McGregor's star power to the next level. Boom! Boom! It's a straight left. The fight that saw him conclusively overtake Ronda Rousey after her UFC 193 loss to Holly Holm. Jose Aldo was a pound-for-pound -pound contender on a run of dominance that stretched back an entire decade. And by the time Conor made his way into their title fight, Aldo was seen as the betting favorite. So when McGregor managed to KO in a record-breaking 13 seconds to steal away his featherweight title, it birthed a star that took MMA to a level that no longtime fan could have imagined. Conor Not only is McGregor now one of the most famous men in combat sports, but he's one of the biggest sporting superstars of the century, period. Khabib yeah, that's facts, though. versus Conor McGregor. Yeah, and Khabib 29. choked him out in this one. Through with a fighting spirit since 1925. Every great sporting. But that that just shows like how big Conor was. It, like he's literally like got two fights in this. The truly huge landmark moment for MMA came when McGregor locked horns with Khabib Nurmagomedov. Yeah. Khabib got a hold of his ankles. Like he got literally got two, even though he lost on this one, like he still featured in two of the in every way. two of the biggest and fights ever. Everything that made McGregor who he was. The build up to this bout was just about as fiery as can be. With lines being crossed relating to family, culture, and religion on McGregor's end. But on fight night, Nurmagomedov would have the last laugh. Capping off a dominant performance with a post-fight brawl that sent UFC 229 related news into the stratosphere. And it was already by far and away the most watched UFC event of all time. Screaming at the corner. He's screaming at Dylan Dennis. Anyway, that will just about do it for this video. But which fight do you think had the biggest effect on the sport of mixed martial arts since its beginnings three decades ago? All right, y'all. That was a very dope-ass video. I really um, learned a lot about some of the biggest fights in UFC history this time. And um, it's shocking. Um, actually, none of it was actually shocking. Like, Ronda Rousey um, was definitely not surprising that she was in there because she's definitely the, the most famous women's fighter of all time. I know she ain't the gold or nothing, but she's definitely the, the one who transcended the sport to the mainstream for the women. Conor McGregor is definitely one of those fighters that transcended UFC into the mainstream, mainstream like it is now. Um, John Jones being on here doesn't doesn't surprise me. Um, one of the uh, ones that um, didn't necessarily surprise me, but but uh, was cool to see was uh, Ken Shamrock being in here, um, and then that Krokov guy from the uh, from one of the earlier videos I reacted to. That is nuts to see some of these um, hear some of these names, see some of these fights uh, of these legends that I had heard of but never really got to see fight too often so that was pretty awesome as well um you guys i hope you guys are liking these reactions y'all don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're liking the reactions and if you really like them make sure you hit that notification bell y'all and we out y'all uh, peace